my name is Shihao, and I work on the Flutter team in the Bay Area, California. However, I'm currently working out of Taiwan, uh, which is why I'm able to give this talk at this time, because it's currently 3 AM in California. Um, I'm also happy to be able to represent Southeast Asia on the Flutter team. I grew up in Malaysia and then went to the US to further my education and then stayed on later to work for Google. Um, I've been on the Flutter team at Google for a, a little over two years now. And recently, I've been mostly working on the localizations tool and also on state restoration. Um, however, I'm starting to shift gears these days to start working on the new menu system, particularly to support desktop, as well as continue work with autocomplete, which is the main widget I'll be discussing during my talk today. Um, this is my first time giving a presentation like this, so bear with me. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm happy to have this opportunity to talk and share about the work I do for the team. All right. So why talk about autocomplete? I thought a little, I thought quite long and hard about what I wanted to talk about. And um, you know, I didn't want to talk too much about Flutter 2 because I knew I know that most of the details on it were shared on the internet. There are a lot of blog posts, a lot of YouTube videos. So like any little detail that you're looking for is probably already on the internet. And you know, there's probably like um, API docs and um, um, at Code Labs to share more about every little thing that you're uh, that you want to um, look into. And I also didn't want to get too technical since I, I'm not sure every person would be very interested in the implement de implementation details of any particular widget. So I decided to talk about something a little more personal um, and the process of how our team starts scoping out work for the autocomplete widget. Um, the reason for that being, I think that um, the listeners here can learn a lot about how the Flutter team prioritizes and picks up work for issues and new features. And you know, you can also learn how to actively design and participate in providing feedback for certain features. Um, from there, the hope is that you, know, you guys could help us help you. Um, one of the cool things about working in open source is that we try to be as open as possible with all of our processes, whether it's like designing new features or like working on existing bugs or you know, just like any part of the process. Um, yeah, and also um, just a disclaimer, like this talks kind of assumes that everyone here has a basic understanding of Flutter. Um, but if you don't, that's totally fine as well. And um, you know, we'll be happy to take questions at the end of the talk. Um, let's see. Yeah, so how autocomplete started. So this all started with an event called Flutter Interact back in 2019. So I had the privilege of attending this event um, and it was held in New York. Um, it was our event basically to showcase the latest on Flutter and you know how we focused on the ability to break um, to create great UI experiences across multiple devices. So as a volunteer there, basically I spend most of the time talking to attendees about, you know, showing them some sample Flutter apps, um, talking to them about the work I do, and trying to answer questions the best I can. Um, at the event, I happened to run into Hillel, who's mentioned in this slide. He's a Google developer expert um, for Flutter, and he's also the co-founder of Invoice Ninja. Uh, Invoice Ninja is basically an invoicing app for freelancers and businesses, and I think that their client web app is um, made with Flutter. And um, back then, Flutter was still in beta, and so he was basically building uh, a Flutter web app using the master branch and Flutter. Um, you know, when I was there at the event, he mentioned to me like, "Hey, um, Shihao, you know, I have a lot of trouble finding a good out of the box solution, particularly for autocomplete." And so, you know, you might ask, "What is autocomplete?" Um, it's basically a normal text input enhanced by like a panel of suggested options. So if you look at this slide, like there's a GIF of basically a, a text field. And as you type words into the text field, it brings up a drop down menu. And so, you know, um, this wasn't supported like really well on Flutter. And so what Hillel was doing, for example, was he was using a third party package. I think he, I think it was type ahead. And he said that it lacked functionality for web and desktop, particularly around keyboard navigation. And that's really important for him, right? Because at the time, um, I mean, not at the time, but even now, like it's still a Flutter web app and he really needs that. Um, so the first thing I did for him was I filed a GitHub issue. Um, basically, if you like the more detailed um, description of how GitHub, I mean, sorry, of how Flutter prioritizes um, issues, go on GitHub and um, look at our wiki. But I'll talk about some core important aspects to our process. So one of the examples is we look at the severity of the issue. For example, if um, the break, if the build is breaking, or we're, like there's like a bug that blocks a key customer, that tends to be the highest priority. But one other thing we pay attention to is the number of thumbs ups there are on the GitHub issue itself. So if, for example, if you look at the slide right now, the issue I posted within the matter of like I think one or two weeks, 
got a lot of thumbs ups. So like I think the first week I remember seeing like 30 or 40. And so we knew that um, it was a, a feature that our users were really interested in. So the first thing that we usually do after like deciding a, a, um, a feature is important is we start writing uh, a design doc. And this is something we tend to do with more complex features. So a quick summary of what a design doc is. Um, they are basically how any Flutter contributor shares their thought process on you know, possible paths moving forward with a new feature for a code migration or as a means to get feedback from the community about any um, new feature that you might want to create for Flutter. Um, Anybody interested in creating, fixing, or updating a complex feature, you know, is welcome to resign um, to write a design document, not just like um, um, Flutter, uh, not just the Flutter team. Um, one of the cool things that we do, uh, what? Sorry, one of the cool things about the work we do with Flutter is that you know, you can even if you don't write a design doc, you can actively engage as well. So that's kind of how we co continue to incorporate feedback from Hillel and other members of the team. They basically wrote comments on the GitHub issue. They made comments on the design doc. And um, we basically incorporated that feedback on an iterative basis. Um, in the case of autocomplete, um, Justin, who is one of my teammates, he took the lead with working on this feature. And he put a ton of input on the auto, into autocomplete's design document. Um, he is basically our resident expert in, the Flutter's, um, in Flutter's text editing system. And that's perfect, because autocomplete is basically a fa like uh, you can consider it kind of a fancier text field. So um, some of the key design discussions uh, we had around the widget was extensibility, flexibility, and accessibility. So for extensibility, we wanted to make sure that the widget can be extended upon by users to create their own UI for autocomplete. Um, so what that means is, like, for example, we made a, a version of autocomplete called raw autocomplete. And basically, um, what this is is it's um, the widget library version of this widget. And it basically allows users to extend the autocomplete functionality with their own custom UI. And so on the other hand, we also um, offer a material style version of autocomplete, which is which basically extends on this raw autocomplete widget. And this is pretty much the out of the box recommendation for the material design systems autocomplete component. Um, one of the nice things about doing this is uh, with the raw version that uh, of the autocomplete, um, it allows us to kind of adapt as needed, you know, like material and the, the material and Cupertino widgets are, um, sorry, the material and Cupertino libraries are always like um, evolving. So for example, like, you, you know, iOS widgets are always like changing, like, you know, from I, iOS version to iOS version, they might like UI might change ever so slightly. And so by making the code more modular, it allows us to adapt quickly to these changes every year. Um, it also helps us look ahead with supporting design systems in our other newer supported flat platforms. So for example, now that we support desktop, you know, we might need to support a design system for uh, Windows, for Linux, and for Mac OS. Um, on the second point of flexibility, uh, we want to also make sure we support what we call a split UI API. So if you look at this um, GIF on the slide, basically what that is is um, instead of having a dropdown that contains all the possible options you can select, it shows up in the body of the application. So when you see the list show up right now, like that's basically not, a, uh, it's not in an overlay that's actually um, painting itself onto the body of the app. Um, so examples for how to do this is in the API documentation, if you're curious. Um, and if it isn't, please file an issue. Um, but yeah, ba this basically allows the user to customize the results for autocomplete shown based on the value in the text field. And the third point is accessibility. And this, you could argue, is the most important one, especially for Hillel. He wanted to handle, he wanted our widget to be able to handle um, keyboard navigation, particularly on web and desktop. So we definitely want to get this one right. So, you know, after a few months, a few thousand lines of code, and a few rounds of code reviews later, um, we have functionality for autocomplete merge into Flutter. And it's actually already available in Flutter 2. Um, the code review process involved multiple members of the team and multiple rounds of review, as well as going back to the design doc um, you know, to update terminology whenever we needed to and incorporate new ideas to the existing design when um, our team members had ideas. Um, I also want to go over some technical bits. I don't want to go into too much detail because you know, I know when I look at large blocks of code, I start to like zone out. Um, I wanted to emphasize you know, how composition played a huge part in creating the autocomplete material widget. Um, since Flutter is all about composition, 
what that means is the UI for autocomplete itself is actually based on a lot of already implemented lower level widgets. Um, for example, um, the material autocomplete options UI is basically just a list view with nested inkwells and text widgets. Another example is the text field, the autocomplete text field itself is basically a text field widget within the autocomplete widget. So if you look at the circle, the red circle in the slide deck, you'll see that the built function of the autocomplete field um, widget basically builds a text form field and kind of like common, like customizes it a little bit. You know, of course, there's a lot of code in the widget for autocomplete functionality in itself. But in terms of the UI, a lot of it is already present in existing widgets. And you know, if you're planning on um, building your own third third party Flutter package or a Flutter application, you can just extend on existing widgets really easily, including the autocomplete widget. So here's some quick sample code for how to use the autocomplete widget. So um, I just want to go over like a really quick example of like how to use the autocomplete widget. Um, in the I think in the simplest um, possible way, you only need to define two parameters. So the first parameter is options builder. And that basically just decides what suggestions you want to provide to the user depending on what's already in the text field. So in this case, um, we have a list of strings um, in K options. It's just a list of strings of the names of Southeast Asian countries. And based on the value in the text field, um, as long as the list of countries contain that substring, it's going to show into the options, the list of options. Um, the second parameter is on selected, and it's just basically a callback that gets called anytime a listed option is selected. And all it does is it prints the message. So what's next? So what this means is like um, the autocomplete uh, widget is not done. There's a lot of additional um, features we want to include and incorporate. So, so far, Hillel seems happy with like what we put forward and hopefully we'll continue to deliver as we add more functionality to autocomplete. Um, I've been busy with other projects myself, so I haven't had a chance to contribute directly to autocomplete except for like um, providing feedback in the design doc and providing code reviews for Justin. But I'm going to get back into it soon. And the first thing I'm going to work on is um, keyboard support with Justin. Um, there are other features that were discussed in the design doc, like handling async. Um, that would be great follow-up features for the widget. And you know, if you're still interested in providing feedback or reporting a bug with the autocomplete widget as it is now, go on GitHub and file an issue, or you know, go to the design doc and um, say something over there. And I also want to um, point out that you know, contributions to Flutter are like very welcome. Like you know, I hope that walking through the autocomplete, um, uh, you know, the process for how autocomplete came to be was very helpful with understanding how Flutter issues are scoped, designed, and worked on by the team. You know, every major every major Flutter feature goes through basically the same process. We try to be as open as possible with everything. Um, so feel free to contribute wherever and participate wherever you want. Um, you know, you could just contribute um, reproducible bug samples. Um, submit PRs. Don't hesitate to uh, contribute to any of the features of the framework that you're like particularly interested in. Um, you can hop onto GitHub and look at our wiki for more information and suggestions for how you can do that as well. Um, you know, we have a few very prolific open source contributors, and you know they're very actively adding features and fixing bugs. And you know, I found it very fun to like work with them as well because I find that um, not only am I able to like teach some stuff to um, open source contributors, but I also always learn something new with, from them along the way. Um, so yeah, um, thank you all for tuning into my talk and to this event. I just want to also say a quick thank you to Nilai on the Flutter DevRel team for sharing this opportunity with me. I'm so happy I can like um, speak and share with you guys. Also want to thank Shavraz and the rest of the team that put together this event. And last but not least, also thank Justin and Hans and everyone else who worked on the autocomplete project over the last few months. Um, I'll be available later for the Q&A, as mentioned before, um, to talk about the presentation or Flutter in general. Um, thank you, guys. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this event.